Thank you. We are recording. Good morning, everyone. My pleasure to call the meeting to order this morning. And Craig, I believe we have a quorum. We do, yes, sir. And our first order of business today will be to approve our minutes from our June 28th special meeting. Hope you've had a chance to review those, and if so, is there a motion for approval of those minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We have properly moved and second. Any questions on that motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposes like sign. Motion carries. And do you need to read your special statement? No, oh, this is a regular meeting. You are good to go. <laughs> Feels weird to start a meeting yeah, without it, doesn't it's it? Like, it's not a real meeting now. Yeah. And we going to move through some business today and I know one of the things that we did was establish a consultant and we want to introduce Ethan Howard and get an update. Hi, well, my name is Ethan Howard and uh, I guess about six to eight weeks ago uh, formally came on board to assist with uh, the project at the Turkey Neck property and, and moving that forward and facilitating and supporting that. Uh, through the different stages. Uh, initially, a lot of the works that I've been doing has been on the zoning change, which I think is later in the agenda item, uh, but working through some of the uses in that area as well as some of the justification statements for the zone change. And then also, as we move forward, looking at some um, other comp business parks in other areas of the country as well. So I'm excited. That's an exciting project and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to work on it. So you're the person that's going to wake up every morning thinking about this project so we don't have to, is that right? <laughs> now that's Craig. <laughs> <laughs> morning and think about a couple of projects. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you'll remember a couple of, I guess it was two or three board meetings ago, we had a discussion about wanting to bring somebody on board to help out with some of the tasks related to, to Coldstream. So Ethan has been brought on board and has really been helping out, particularly with the, the zoning effort that we're moving forward with. But we thought, you know, Josh brought up the good point at the meeting where we discussed bringing somebody on board, and so we thought it was important for Ethan to come to these meetings as we, as we get him rolling and kind of update on everybody on what he is actively engaged in. And thank you. Any other questions for Ethan? Who's I see. Boss you've ever had? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's what I did. Thank you very much. for currently. <laughs> and I think this is my first in-person meeting with that's you. That's right. And I think we were online. We were over Zoom, but yeah. uh, as the last year and a half has gone, it's nice to see people actually. Yeah. Even behind the mask, it's nice to see in person for once. Yeah, so thank you very much. So thanks for that update. And now we're ready for our budget update from Ashley. Hey, everyone. Ashley Clinton with the Finance Department. We've got a budget report in your folder in the blue and green. It's broken into two, two separate areas, and we're going to look at it in two separate ways. You have um, at the top what we're going to consider a project budget, and this is the account where your sales of real property go in and where we pay for some of those development costs. So we have total revenues there of 540, sorry, excuse me, 542, 454, and 250 of that is for um, a letter of intent we got earlier this year, and it will be held in reserve. That you'll see there in your expenses, you've got your Gresham Smith contract and your Ethan Howard contract, Mr. Howard, who we met today. Um, and then we're holding that 250 in reserve. So that leaves you a total of about 108000 that would be available to expend um, on any, anything that would be needed. At the bottom, we have what we're calling our operating budget. And this is your year-to-year -year budget. So the one that we set at the beginning of the year and then spend that throughout the year and then reset for the next year. There we have $70,000 in revenues, which are coming from your IRE fees. I'm transferring over into the general fund to offset these expenses. You know that's how the sausage is made, but so you know that's where it is. Um, those 70000 are expended on professional services. That's how the budget's laid out there for legal, mowing, and other professional service expenses. There's only about $500 that's been expended in this year to date, so there's plenty of uh, available budget there for what you may need. Are there any questions about that? So are we, um, are we clearly segregating our capital budget from operating budget? And so in terms of, so, so for instance, Ethan is a development cost. It, it, and so are we clearly separating that moving forward, or is that just for our own sort of practice and benefit? Um, moving forward, we would. So yep. if we um, move forward with the Coldstream Development Project, laying the water sewer and, and infrastructure there, that would be its own project budget and would be separate from this. Got it. Okay. So this is really more of a pre, uh, 
Yeah, okay. Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Well, you'll see us spending more out of this account this year. Uh, for example, the, the money uh, Ashley was talking about that's been spent was getting the legal description and the boundary survey done so that the zoning process could begin. So those have been paid. They just haven't showed up for the year yet. And that's coming out of the operating budget? Yeah, it's coming out. Okay. Any other questions? Will donuts fit in our budget? Excuse me? <laughs> I said, will donuts fit in our budget? <laughs> nice to talk with uh, Mr. Atkins about that. <laughs> Any other questions of Ashley? Thank you very much. Thank you. And we do not need an approval on that, correct? Okay. And we've been doing lots of work, or the staff has behind the scenes that the, that the board has authorized, and they have several updates here under your A through D under the Coldstream 200 acre site. One of those is uh, kind of funny that C. What do you call this thing? Uh, but, <laughs> you want to start running down through? Sure, I was gig? just going to provide some general updates. It's been a while since we've had a chance to get together and really talk about what's going on with the site. So feel free to just ask questions or, or uh, discuss as, as I move through these. But, um, well, let's see. Page four in your packet is the latest and greatest version of the master plan. I wanted to make sure that you all had that to reference, even though it printed the wrong direction here. Hopefully it's of use. And then page five forward, I'll be talking about in just a minute. That is, those are some voluntary restrictions that we're proposing for the new I-1 zone. So first thing I was gonna talk about is the zone change update. Um, we've been moving forward with uh, requesting a council initiated zone change to I-1 for the site. And that actually um, took place on Tuesday. Um, Council member, <clears throat> excuse me, Council member McKern initiated or made the motion to initiate um, the zone change to I-1 across this entire site. That will, that resolution, I believe, will go to the docket for this evening for first reading. So the the zone change is in progress. And the way the way that will work is after the resolution is approved by council, it will then go to um, the planning commission. The Planning Commission has 90 days to review this and, and take action on it. And then it will, and I'm paraphrasing this greatly, but it goes back to Council for their final approval. So we're somewhere between three and four months away, potentially, from the site being rezoned, which will really be a big step towards uh, you know being able to market it and move on with next steps for the site. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about today was just a general discussion regarding funding. There is a uh, an exciting possibility of this site um, being included in some ARPA funding. Uh, the council is, is having that discussion now. Um, the master plan process identified about $17.5 million in development costs for this particular site, and that is Everything that you see on that master plan, it is, well, and everything you don't see on that master plan, frankly, it's the underground utilities, it's uh, intersection improvements to, to add signalization there at Kearney Hall, um, it's putting the roadways through the site, it's storm waters, and it um, includes the legacy trail connections as well, and, and everything that goes along with that, the storm water and the signage and everything, so that is that's kind of an all-inclusive um, cost, including the professional services. So there has been no decision on that, but we wanted to make you aware that that is, is moving through the discussion process at the council level. Um, I don't know, Kevin, if you wanted to add anything I to think, that. I think, you know, and Derek will remember this day. The important thing about that is, and Daryl, you know this, everybody wants something that they can see. They want to see it done. Derek and I took somebody out there uh, not long after this deal was announced. He's one of the leading site selection consultants in, in this part of the country. And he loved the site, but he was still having a hard time imagining it. I mean, he thought it was the perfect piece of property, but how you get it done. Uh, and now, uh, let's see how to say this, I think we're seeing a Toyota in reverse action getting ready to happen which makes this even more important because with the Ford plant, battery plant down in Hardin County, you know, we all saw what Toyota did for the entire state 
to have any site ready for for suppliers and others. And the demand's there. I mean, Jen and I have already had three or four meetings with companies. <laughs> had one wanting to put a down payment on, if they ask if they could go ahead and select their site and put a pre-down payment on uh, the site, which obviously our lawyers said, man, you can't do that, you don't have title to the property. Uh, so there's a lot of interest, but for us to be able to take somebody out there and literally show them the lots is a big deal. And, and it will go a long way toward uh, bringing more revenue selfishly bringing more revenue into the, the government through payroll taxes and, and which is just the return on investment. Do you have a sense of whether we would be awarded these dollars and is it all or nothing or it could be a portion? I think I would look at my friend to my right because I don't <laughs> have the answer to that and I'm not sure the council knows yet as they deliberate. I, I don't think we know yet either. Okay. I have two questions. Where is UK in terms of right getting off the site? Right, right, right there. <laughs> 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 because, because our question. Your timing, your timing is perfect. <laughs> so, but it, it's tied into the ARPA funds. Is there a time they have to be spent? Yes. And so the UK's timing first, because I, I was, it's been a while, not too long, but I was out near there and didn't see a lot of work progressing on getting off the site, <laughs> which I thought was supposed to be by January. But I can't We're targeting Jal July. You remember the contract said between January and July right. 1. It's and just I think we're targeting July 1 <clears throat> uh, at this point. And, you know, they, they went ahead and supported us on the zone change as well, trying to help us get started. So George may want to say something else, but I think we're all working toward, you know, getting it done as quickly as possible. Yeah, we've been in communication with Kevin and Craig throughout, and you'll, you'll start seeing a lot happening around March. And does that work with ARPA timing? Maybe. Yeah, uh, speaking, we've got about three years to make the commitment of funds, and then uh, it's four or five, Derek, I can't remember off the top of my head, to actually expend the funds. So we're if I may, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, we're in the process right now of we wrote, we've identified from each council member 30 individual projects or proposals to move forward with. And then that was put all, all into a pot. Some of them were doubled up. So we had, I think our highest vote count was seven votes for one project, or one proposal. And this, this proposal ranked very high on the council. Then we broke it into subcommittees which then moved it into you know different areas of saying, hey, you take a look at this section. So my, my subcommittee is equity services. Um, you know this one would be under infrastructure, and I I know that it, talking with my colleagues in that sense, it is of the utmost importance still for them to see it move forward as well. So I'm optimistic in seeing that proposal come back to the council when we we talk next week. I think the beauty of this proposal is it checks so many boxes. Mm -hmm. When you bring jobs in, you help create new housing. People, when they build it, they buy a house. You help stabilize neighborhoods. I mean, it, it just, yeah. it, it, it checks so just so many yeah. boxes. And we only have that one prime <clears throat> spot in our community uh, for this kind of emphasis. And we need to take advantage of it. And Everybody's support is, is very good in this endeavor. And thank you for spearheading this effort. Yes, sir. Yes, remember, we really appreciate it. I, uh, I don't want to over-promise and under-deliver, but, but you never know which way the wind blows sometimes with the council. So <laughs> until it's a final vote, we can't. I don't want to say anything forward, but I am very optimistic with this project. Yeah. Any other questions about funding? Craig, you want to update us on the... Uh, Potential site naming options. Sure, actually, if I can, I'd like to go back to the zone change for just a moment. I, okay. I managed to skip over one of the important facets of that. Starting in page five of your packet are, are the B4 and I1 zones. And the reason <coughs> B4 is in there is because all of the uses that are allowed in B4 are also allowed in I1. So we took a look at those as well. Um, what, what we've been doing is taking a look at the principal uses that are allowed in both of those zones with a, kind of with an eye toward 
the community input we received for the type of uses that the community wanted to see next door, as well as taking a look at, at removing uses that don't create many jobs, frankly. We want to make sure that there's some density of job creation across the site. So what, what you see here is we've, we've stricken through, and this is all in very draft form. We're working with planning, and we've had internal discussions here, but we'd love to get your input on, on this list as well. Some of the uses that, that we feel probably wouldn't be appropriate for the site, we've gone through, and we've just done some strike through on that. So you'll see things like um, just wholesale, um, just warehousing for the site. Typically there's not a lot of jobs that you see associated with that. And some of these are kind of obscure, like we wouldn't expect to see an ice plant anyway, but, but we went ahead and removed that from know. the list. But we, we certainly want, wouldn't want to see just a large parking lot as a principal use, for example. So is this being, is this being codified in the zone change, or is this an internal document for our benefit? So this will accompany the zone change okay, and would so be approved along with the, it would be essentially, we would be adding those conditions for those, okay. to limit those uses along Perfect. with the okay. zone. So this so. reflects what we heard from the, kind of the public engagement session we did where the, the two neighborhoods were there uh, online and also with the thought in mind where you're maximizing your employment on site as well. You know, distribution's nice, but it creates not many jobs. I would assume this is where the Planning Commission will have a lot of discussion. I, I believe they will, sure. <clears throat> so, yeah. One thing we talked about up front there, there was a lot maybe suited for like a restaurant or something. Mm -hmm. This doesn't hinder us there, does it? It does not, and that, that's an important point. What, what we did for the purposes of the, the rezone is, is we just identified very generally the air, an area at the front of the site running Georgetown Road that would be kind of earmarked for a later B-X use, whether that's B2 or whatever that ends up being. Um, that allows us the discretion to come back in and delineate a site for a community business use at the front of the site later on. We heard that loud and clear from the community that they were very interested in seeing something. So there. Generally, that might be parcel A. Is that the yeah, I think that, right. I think it'll be, uh, and I'm not sure it would be all of parcel A. I think it would be some part of parcel A in that neighborhood there. Okay. Um, but we didn't want to draw a hard line around that right now because we don't have a development plan for the rest of the site. So it'll, it'll give us some flexibility later to identify that. I know that we don't want to constrain necessarily to putting a word on that, but if we could leave all of parcel A for, you know, a B2 or whatever we can look at there, and I understand if something comes in that's a small I1 opportunity, and we can maybe carve out a smaller plot there, but I know the neighborhood is very, very wanting to see a lot go in there sure. that, is, that is for business. Yeah. And I, I know that this whole purpose, but and that's more catering back to the neighborhood, but I do think that's very important. I, I would have a question if I'm yes, sir. about number seven here. We have potential further consideration. Is that because of the Ford uh, battery plant and consideration of, of like that's, a machine shop? Yeah, I don't know how that would be considered. And that's probably um, one an important consideration for that. I think when we were going through, we were trying to figure out specific uses that we're just not anticipating that might that might need that particular category, but isn't exactly what we're we're thinking would be an issue. So that okay. that could be something like that, an ancillary or complementary use to that. Another example is a manufacturer might have a showroom or something like that, and I can't remember what page, but there's something where we wouldn't necessarily want a whole area being just a showroom, sure. but it may be a component that we want to make sure is restricted. So there's a few things throughout here like that. that well, well, let's make like a Mustang museum. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a number of conditional uses that we've, we're also proposing to remove, and I'm on page seven of the packet now. And this is the things like mining on the site. Clearly, that that would uh, that would not be an appropriate use for what we're talking about. Um, there's some ecotourism. We're it's truly going to be a business uh, industrial park, so we went ahead and struck that. And 
and so on and so forth. The actual uses that are for the I1 zone don't begin in this packet until 16 and 17 of the packet. And there's less strike throughs when we go through there, but we have just, there was a lot of low-hanging fruit in here, frankly, like commercial wood lots. You wouldn't expect to see that in here anyway, but that's certainly not going to create a lot of jobs. So that, that was removed, as well as some conditional uses, um, <coughs> uh, like correctional institutions. And really, you'll see a lot of uh, strike through, through like automobile type of uses. And, and parking and those sorts of things. There's a lot of strike throughs as well on page 20. You'll see commercial composting, heliports, which sounds pretty cool, but probably not for the site. And, <laughs> and again, mining comes up over and over again um, throughout this. Um, so yeah, if, if there's any questions or any additional input on this, I understand that the board will probably want some time to review this. This is something that we could revisit if you'd like, or if you'd like to send an email once you get a chance to take a look at it and let me know your thoughts as well. That would be helpful for us, I think, as we move this through the process of planning.